So now that we've run the local examples, we can get to the fun part and actually take our representative, uh, ex uh, our representative examples and run them in testnet. Rather, deploy them first <clears throat> and then run them in testnet. So um, the, the example that I'm going to do is our basic hello world. Um, so we're, we're not asking anything additionally onerous here. We're just going to run the same scripts that we had run before, but changing some input parameters, right? So. Um, yeah, so we're going to deploy. Yeah, this is the, this is the one. So we're going to deploy the call contract example, and um, you see my my first parameter here is testnet. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, this may take a minute because it's actually deploying a live contract to uh, the various testnet environments that we have instantiated, right? Um, so while that, I guess it is quicker than I anticipated, but uh, while the rest of the contracts are being deployed, uh, maybe something quick, a couple quick things to show. Um, if we go to the info directory, um, these are the configurations for the RPC endpoints and the chain IDs that we have for um, the supported EVM chains that we have. Um, so literally, this is posting uh, messages to um, those RPC endpoints that we've configured here, right? So that's number one. And two, um, <clears throat> as you all may know, anytime you post a transaction to a blockchain, it, it's... Or it, you have to pay transaction costs or, or, or gas, right? Um, what we didn't establish up front, and maybe we should have, is when you're running this local, local environment, we actually have a local deployer key um, that we set up anytime you run any of these commands against either local or, or testnet, right? So um, let's go, if you recall, um, we had kind of pointed to um, the deploy and test scripts. Um, in the scripts folder. So if I go into any one of these, yeah, here you see um, this private key that we had set up. Uh, it's it's the <laughs> based on this hashed random string here um, that we inject into a wallet, and um, it's that, and the private the associated private key for that is this, um, and across each of the EVM chains that we deployed, we, we funded that address with um, some amount of native tokens. So when you're deploying it from this environment, it's, it's already kind of configured for you, right? Um, one thing to check is what the balances of that um, address are. So let's go ahead and run, uh, and we do have a script for that, right? So let's run that script. It's node scripts check balances. All right, and so these are actual testnet values. So um, this private key uh, corresponds to this address across the same address across each of the EVM chains, and you see that there's some amount of native token on each one of them, right? So now that we have that established, um, we can go ahead and run our actual example, um, our hello world example in testnet. Yeah, this is the guy. All right, so um, this also may take um, some time to propagate, but while that's happening, um, I'll look to show you something else as well, um, i.e. checking the status of this transaction as it propagates through uh, from Moonbeam as the source chain um, through our network um, and ultimately uh, arriving to that destination contract on Avalanche. So um, what I may do, so I initiated that transaction right from this address as we established. So um, let's go to the block scanner on Moonbeam testnet and find that transaction in question. So it's this guy here. Right, so yeah, you see this is probably the one 34 seconds ago. Um, I'm going to show you our block scanner in a second, but um, for all of our general message passing transactions, we um, actually reference them by the transaction hash on the source chain. Um, so that's why I went to this particular transaction. So I'm just going to copy this guy and go to the URL for our for our uh, testnet block explorer, and that's just testnet.xlrscan.io, and then. Um, here I'll paste in our transaction and so yeah you see here that it, it, it's making some progress across um, our network right so um, details of the of the GMP transaction up, up at the top you see that I invoked a call contract method um, going from Moonbeam to Avalanche at this contract address which um, I guess when we when we deployed it we, we actually logged those 
um, addresses here, but just to keep me honest, I'll show you where that is here as well. Um, sorry, what was it? It was ending 409 on Avalanche, and this one does indeed end 409 as well, so you'll be able to find that there as well. Um, so yeah, this is just going through the process. Um, you see here um, there are kind of four steps. One is <clears throat> the, or one and two rather, um, you have the contract call in the source chain. Um, there's this gas receiver that's paid on the source chain. You see that was successfully received. And um, this is on the destination chain. Um, this call approved um, indicates that the gateway contract, um, the, the Axler gateway contract on Avalanche did indeed um, receive this transaction and approve it. And the final step would be for it to actually be invoked um, on the execu uh, invoked on the on the destination contract in question, right? So you see that that was successful as well. Um, this transaction took all of two minutes and six seconds to send a message, hello world, from uh, source to destination. Um, one other thing to check is is what the actual value of um, of that message is on Avalanche as a destination chain, right? So we can actually. Um, we have a link to that. If I click this, this goes directly to testnet snow trace. And if we go to contract, um, we can yeah, verify here that the value was hello world um, with these parameters, um, these parameters also being populated accordingly as well. So um, yeah, I, I think that's it. So I, I think uh, for you guys, it's just a matter of uh, you know iterating on to the extent that you'd like to take this further, um, explore any of the other examples, which again um, are based on these couple of building blocks, right? So once you, once we've established that once you can send hello world, you can send any generic message that you would like, and um, this subset of examples can give you a flavor of the power of our network accordingly. Um, so that's it. And uh, any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out. Thanks a lot.